Well, you are here because you got some new movies coming out. We're going to talk all about these new movies. The first one, of course, is the most talked about thing on digital right now. Zack Snyder's director's cut of Justice League. I mean, it has blown everybody's mind. And the fact that it even got made is what's crazy because, well, well first of all, can you just run us through the difference between this new version and the 2017 original? Well, you know, the thing about it, I think that a lot of people don't realize is that I actually wasn't technically a part of the original Justice right. League. Uh, I was cast in Ben Affleck's Batman to play the villain, mm -hmm. and we shot a scene to tease our matchup mm -hmm. in the Batman film that was going to appear at the end of the film. So that scene was then reconfigured to tease a Justice League 2 movie that didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, so this version, the difference for my character in, yeah. in this version is that Zack restored the original scene that we shot uh -huh. to tease the Batman movie that never happened. And that's what fans will get to see at the end of this. And then they'll get to see some extra added bonus uh, where Zack actually officially invited me in. And now I am actually technically a part of the... The, the Zack Snyder I like verse, this. yeah. I like this very, very much. Because the, the movie, as I was kind of alluding to before, it came about because fans online, mm -hmm. they demanded it. They wanted it. They, they wanted to see something different. Did you want to see something different, too? Was this something that, you know, ever crossed your mind? I mean, you... I would think so if I was in it and then I wasn't in it. Well, yeah, but it's unique for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I had, at the time, you know... Once Batman got canceled, I kind of wrote it off gotcha. and thought, okay, this is over. Mm -hmm. um, I had actually shifted gears and started working with the studio on an origin film for Deathstroke that also didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I just let it go. And yeah. then two weeks before Justice League came out theatrically, I got a call from one of the executives who said, oh, by the way, we retooled the scene and it's, gonna, it's back in at the end See. to advertise a Justice League tumor. I, you know, you could have told me. <laughs> you know. But see that, okay, so that answers a couple of the other questions that I had. Because I wondered, like, is there a world where Deathstroke could have a standalone? Or have, because he has been revived now in, in this one. Is there a series? Is there a world where something like that could happen? Well, unfortunately, I don't own the IP. <laughs> uh, but I will say that, you know, uh, a very prolific director, Gareth Evans, who I'm uh -huh. a huge fan of. I worship at the altar of Gareth Evans, mm -hmm. who did the Raid and Raid 2. Uh, we had a long talk one night on Skype, um, and he wanted to shoot an origin film for Deathstroke with I mean... me in, the, in kind of in the, in the air of the Raid. Uh -huh. um, that didn't happen. Uh, so, <laughs> but let's manifest this but because listen, it's you know, been too. You know. But Joe, there's been too many like bite, bite, bite. Maybe, maybe no more. No, for something like in the universe, mm -hmm. it's not gone. You know? No, no, it's definitely back, and I yeah. think that that fans' appetites are whetted for more. They mm -hmm. want more, and you know, the the Deathstroke origin wouldn't necessarily have anything to do with this path. Mm -hmm. It was its own separate story. So. It isn't necessarily a part of that universe. It was its own, you know, separate part. Have you talked to any of the cast members from Justice League about the new version and, you know, what folks think? And have you sat down and watched the four hours? I, so I have not spoken to any of the other cast members, uh -huh. but uh, I've talked to Zach mm -hmm. a bunch. I talk to Zach all the time. Uh, and, uh, and as far as sitting down and watching the full four hour version, yeah, I did. Uh, mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, I sat down and, uh, with Sophia and, we watched it all the way through. I, I loved it. Yeah, four hours just straight it. through. Yeah. But people can watch it in pieces. I think mm -hmm. if they're intimidated by the four hours, you know, each piece is about 30 something minutes mm -hmm. and there's six of them and then an epilogue. So you can kind of watch a piece and go do your thing, come back. So you like, can kind of do it series way. Like you, you can do 30 <laughs> minute, 30 minute, like you're watching yeah. a series. Yeah, you can binge no, it. sit down and watch the whole thing yeah, at I the know. same time. Yeah. <laughs> you reshot these scenes with Zach during the pandemic. Yep character had a mohawk. Mm -hmm. Was that your idea? Yes, it was. I love, yeah. I love. Yeah. So tell me about that. Like, you know, you went from going, coming back in the pandemic, shooting these revived scenes, and now, you know, there is a big chunk of you. What, like 20, 25 minute big chunk of you. Yeah, you know, um, yes. Yeah, like I said, I had, I had let go um, after, you know, my character was also going to be the main villain in uh, a couple of different incarnations of the Suicide Squad, mm -hmm. part two. 
which didn't happen. Uh, so <laughs> listen, the, the there's a trend of here. This interview is not going to be didn't uh -huh. happen. But this is this interview is happening. happening. So here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so you know, I had let go of it, mm -hmm. and then of course Zach and I were working on a different project. Uh, there's this great 3D animated series that's a prequel mm -hmm. to Zach's Army of the Dead uh, movie that comes out and uh, that I star in that'll mm -hmm. come out later in the year. And Zach and I were working on that and he said, hey, I have this other thing that might be going on. Would you want to play Deathstroke again? So, so it was this call kind of out of nowhere four and a half years later uh, asking me if I wanted to put the suit back on. And I said, yes, but I've had a lot of time to think about the character mm -hmm. and there's a few things that I'd like to do, namely like the Mohawk. I love that. So, and he was open then to your suggestion of that collaboration. Yeah, and, yeah, and, I, like and, and I think, you know, as an actor, you want to put your stink on things. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you look at like, you know, what Tom Hardy got to do with Bane, the character of Bane, that was a very unique take on yeah. that, or, or even Heath Ledger's Joker was very unique to him. And, you know, I had ideas and things that I wanted to do with Deathstroke, and although I would appear briefly in this new version, I, I wanted to start placing those things in that's case. How a lot, but that's how a lot of, whether it's like, you know, DC or MCU, that's how a lot of them start. You see a little snippet of somebody in, a, in an early, you know, movie, then you might get a little bit more, and then all of a sudden you get their story. Well, so. that's how it was supposed to be with Batman. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. we were teasing him, and then, and then we were going to shoot them. Okay, I'm not giving up on that. Yeah. Well, let's go from Maybe. the blonde mohawk to a dark ponytail uh -huh. <laughs> for this new movie, Shoplifters <laughs> of the World. It is in theaters and on digital on Friday. You play a radio DJ yep. um, who is taken hostage and you're forced to play the Smiths songs uh, over and over again all night. Tell me about, first of all, tell me that ponytail was a clip in or did you grow it? Well, no, my hair was down to here when we shot. So that's, this is all, this is all mm -hmm. mine. And, uh, and this is all mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about this movie, and because you know, I know it's a passion project for you. Yeah, too. it was a passion project. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, independent film. The fashion in this film is crazy. It's a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Do you remember something that you wore back in the '80s that you're like, nah, don't ever want to see it again? Oh boy, jeez. Uh, I mean, I was really young in the '80s, yeah. so I didn't have a lot of choice. It was more like I think it was like LL Bean flannel yes. shirts, which I would totally <laughs> wear today, no problem. And the crazy thing is like, you know, Air Jordans mm -hmm. have never gone out of style yeah. and are even more popular now. So I've actually gone back and rebought all of those Air Jordans that I wore playing basketball as a kid. So you got like that original red, black I got them all. Got I got them all. I got the breads, I got the bands, I, I got it. the royals, I got the shadows, I got it all. I love it, I love it. You know, it is all about the music of the Smiths in yep. this uh, film. What, what what kind of music and what were you super passionate about as a teenager? Because this guy that, you know, in the movie, he's super passionate about the I was really passionate about music back then. Yeah. I really was. I mean, sports. I was. I, I played a lot of sports mm -hmm. then. Uh, but I was I was really passionate about music. Um, and, and much like my character in the film, I, I was I was a metalhead. A, a lot of the records that I had, even as a little kid, I uh -huh. had like, you know, old Van Halen, David Lee Roth records that That's I would play stuff, over though. and over. And then I had, like when Appetite for Destruction came out, that that changed everything. Yeah. So what do I do? I dedicate a song to her. You know, we see you getting asked for advice by one of the young cast mates at one point. Mm -hmm. um, and you say you would dedicate a song to her. So what's mm -hmm. an actual good piece of advice for anybody who's looking like to make a move and to sweep somebody off their feet? What's the best? piece of here's how you get her advice. well I think there are certain things that shouldn't change ever that's me personally <laughs> and people can argue with me all they want but you know I'm a big believer in you know there's this trend of like let's meet up mm -hmm. and it's like no go pick her up thank you go make a plan thank you go plan the evening thank you plan the place to go to yes. dinner <laughs> then the place after if it goes well maybe the little piano bar afterwards like Take her on a little adventure, invite her into your world. All she has to do is show up, look great, you know, I'll pick you up at eight, be ready, and then we'll go. And that's it, take care of everything. And I think too many guys of this generation they WYD don't want to, on the yeah, text. No, stop bro. Texting, no, 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 stop sir. Stop texting. Go pick <laughs> her up and go talk to her face to face. Put the phone down. That makes my heart smile. That's it. And have you ever called into a radio station and dedicated a song? We grew up in the, like, I would call sure. Delilah yeah, or whatever. Of course. That was a thing. That was a big thing. Or, like, at the time, there were, like, hot songs. Like, I remember getting out of, out of school 
and if I didn't have practice, then mm -hmm. it was like you wanted to run home to catch that video because you knew it was going to be number yep. one on MTV and yep. you had to get home to see that thing at 325. Thriller was that for me. Yeah. Like, you knew Thriller was going to play. It was like crazy because it was like a mini movie and mm -hmm. you would always try to time it. Okay, top of the hour, you know, we got to get there to and see the VCR. Thriller. You'd have the VCR <laughs> tape in there and, you know, hit the record button. Exactly. You know, to try to catch it. Exactly. What's on yeah. your playlist now? Like, what's, what are you loving? Oh, man, I am, I am down a tool rabbit hole right now. So I am like, I am watching Danny Carey, who is the drummer for Tool. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with Danny Carey. And, uh, and so I, I watch Danny Carey drumming videos like all day long. Like while I'm brushing my teeth, I have them on on my phone <laughs> and while I'm walking around, I don't know what it is. Is there anything that gets you guys up partying, maybe in the kitchen if you're cooking, like the, the song that makes y'all move? Uh, we have very different musical tastes. <laughs> I would say that. No, there is common ground. Yeah. Like, like she loves the Smiths. Like mm -hmm. she's really, you know, she's into the Smiths, so that, that was great. But, uh, but you know, we we kind of grew up listening to different things. I'm so sure. when I go down, I built a, I have a home gym in the basement. So I'll go down there and I'll come back up, and she's like, "What was that devil music you were playing?" <laughs> and, and that's generally how my music is viewed. But no, but I, but you know, I, I can, we have common ground. There's yeah. like, I'm big into like electronic and DJ, you know, and I used to have techniques and a rain mixer. So I have like, you know. Wait, don't cool tell music. me you on the ones and twos. Don't let I me just, find out you DJ a set or two. Still have all my vinyl at, at the house. Come on, Joe Manganiello, learning things about you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks.